just in the moment of silent meditation as we prepare to worship our Lord. Wednesday begins in your bulletin. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His, His mercy, mercy endures forever. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming, it is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountain, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering or a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet of Zion, sanctify a fast, 
call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priest, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples? Where is their God? The word of the Lord. Our psalm is 103. Uh, let's read it responsibly at the party with the half verse. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. He will not always excuse us. He has not dealt with us according to our sins. For as the heavens are high above the earth, as far as the east is from the west, as a father cares for his children, for he himself knows whereof we are made. The next reading is from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you. On, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are great as impostors, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known. As dying and you see, we are alive, as punished and not yet killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. 
for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you this evening in the name of our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Tonight, as it seems like the last 365 days have been, are going to be a little different. We are not going to be able to impose ashes in the way that we normally do in the Episcopal Church. This has been handed down to us by the National Episcopal Church in our diocese, that because of COVID fears, touching others and touching forehead to forehead and such is not going to be permissible this Ash Wednesday. Now, now, for a lot of us, that disturbs us because we look at that, the imposing of ashes on our forehead, as a tradition in the Episcopal Church. But I will tell you, it is a fairly new tradition in the Episcopal Church. In fact, the 1979 prayer book is the first prayer book that ever had a Ash Wednesday rite that included the imposition of ashes. Before then, certain churches did it, but it was not a church-wide thing to impose ashes on the forehead. This was all new to me, by the way, so you're learning as I'm learning. Actually, in the early church, there were no ashes. Ashes were not spread on people. There were people who were called penitents that were preparing themselves to repent and return to God, and those were people that were prayed for within the church. It wasn't until around five or 600 that ashes started to be used on these penitents in order to show them and remind them of their imminent death, their imminent mortality. As we say at Ash Wednesday, remember that you are but dust, and to dust you shall return. That's what this night is all about. It's a wake-up call for us to remember our mortality and to remember that we need to prepare ourselves for that mortality as Christians. In fact, that's what the whole period of Lent is for for us. It's a period of contemplation and self-inspection self and self-examination to ask ourselves, how are we doing with God? How are we doing with each other? How are we doing with ourselves and the promises we make to ourselves? And so it wasn't really until the 11th century that we first started seeing ashes being used church-wide. Before that time, it was only for those who were penitents that were going to basically make a confession going into Easter. And then at that time, it wasn't put on the forehead as a sign of the cross. 
That is really, really new. Prior to that time, ashes were sprinkled on the head of the individual. And it's a practice that started in monasteries. So the member of the, la of the lady would come up to the altar to the priest. They would bow. The priest would say those words, remember that you are but dust, and but to dust you shall return, and would sprinkle ashes on the head of the penitent. I'll tell you why in just a minute. I'm saving that part for the end. But now why it's important that we keep a sign of our mortality. Now we all believe as Christians, and this is something that really kind of theologically has bothered me through this entire pan pandemic. We are taught as Christians that we do not fear death because death does not have the final word. We belong to Jesus Christ, and no matter if we die tomorrow getting hit by a bus or die in five years or something else, at that time, whenever we are called up yonder, we are going to be in the loving arms of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what we believe as Christians. But we also know that there will be a judgment day when that day comes. And we're going to have to stand before our God and explain to him the things we did and the things we didn't do. And that's probably an examination that's going to take a little bit of preparation on our part. The problem with us is we kind of go through life and forget about that and worry about living life and don't really worry about what comes next. It's almost as if we were driving down a road and we see a sign that says bridge out 12 inches. Well, by the time we read the sign, we're already in the cabin, right? That's not enough notice. Now, we luckily have signs all over the road that tell us a thousand feet, five hundred feet, so we you know, get sick of seeing them. But in real life, we don't. In real life, we know that death often comes suddenly. Death often comes without, as we've seen this year, the ability to repent and ask for lost rights in some cases. Sometimes death comes without being able to see friends and family and say final goodbyes. And so this Lenten season has been for us historically a time for us to contemplate our own morality, mortality, excuse me, and morality as that goes, but especially our own mortality. It is a time for us to take that self-examination and see where we are in our relationship with God and with each other. It's a way for us to see if we've done the things that we said that we were going to do the things that we promised to do at our baptism. And that's why mortality is really the underlying theme of our ministry. Remembering our death, carrying a sign of our death with us. And if all of y'all remember back before we really started cremating people in large numbers, at most funerals when someone was laid in the ground, what would people at the funeral do? They would take a handful of dirt and throw it on the coffin. And the priest would say those same words we say at Ash Wednesday. Remember you are but dust, and to dust you shall return. That's what the sprinkling of ashes on penitents is a sign of. When we sprinkle those ashes on our head, it is the same thing as a sign of us throwing dirt on our coffin. It's a sign that we're dying to the current life that we live to prepare for a new life in Christ. What Lent is all about is dying to self, dying to those things that get in our way of a relationship with God and Jesus Christ. We've heard it said many times in the Bibles, we cannot serve two masters. You can only serve one. Lent is our time to figure out which master do we serve? Who is it that our heart and mind belongs to? And in fact, we heard in our first reading today from Joel that we're commanded to rend our hearts, not our clothing. We're to tear our parts, our parts apart and see to whom they really belong. Do they belong to the world or do they belong to Jesus Christ? That's what this season is all about. 
Like many of you, I'm as broken up as you are that we can't do Ash Wednesday the way that we've typically done Ash Wednesday since I was a child, for that matter. But instead of losing something, instead of thinking of it that way, think about this as an opportunity to gain something. There's an opportunity to gain in the tradition of the early church, as the apostles would have done, those closest to Jesus Christ, as Paul would have done. And perhaps to do something that hasn't been done for decades, if not centuries. And to really embrace the fact, particularly after this year, when death and mortality has been such a topic on all of our hearts. You know, nine months ago, you'd ask anybody if they knew somebody who had COVID, and most of them would say no. Now you can't ask somebody that probably can't count them on both hands and still need more fingers. We've had people in this church that have had that and have faced that mortal battle. I believe in one way or another, it's on all of our consciousness right now. There, but for the grace of God. And so we take precautions. We look after ourselves. We take care of ourselves. But it's still there in the back of our head. And as we get older, it's more than just COVID. It's everything, right? A ton of medical conditions, just, you know, things in the rearview mirror are closer than they appear, as they tell us. And we need to be mindful of that, and that's what this season lets us do. It lets us be mindful of that mortality. And so I invite you tonight, if you wish, when we have the invitation for us, just to come up and have ashes sprinkled on your head. If you don't wish, that's fine too. The imposition of ashes is not a sacrament in our church. It's a sign. It's a sign to us to remember our mortality and nothing more. So you're not a better Christian because you get ashes or a worse Christian because you don't. You're a good Christian right now because you're in church. You're here on this night in this service, praying together as a community. And that's what's important. But if you do, as those ashes are sprinkled on your head, and I say those important words, remember that you are but dust, and to dust you shall return. I would like for you to think about the line that comes after that in our burial service. But even in the midst of death, our cry is, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Because even in the midst of death, we know who we belong to. And we know whose we are. And that's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please stand. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time which convert converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful, were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness, and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby, the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior, and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. 
I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Church, to the observance of a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. And to make a right beginning of repentance, and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now kneel before the Lord, our Maker and Redeemer. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence that we may remember that it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. I would now like to invite the ushers to please bring those who wish to have ashes Come up one at a time to the front altar here, and we'll do it just like we do communion, one at a time, so that we're not crossing and getting in the way of folks.
Let us now say together Psalm number 51, as is found in your bulletin. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak, and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me, and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving health again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness, O God of my salvation. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice, but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth, that we have sinned by our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people. We confess to you, Lord. Our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, O Lord. Our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, O Lord. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation. 
by the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord. Bring us all your saints to the glory of his resurrection. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe the Holy Gospel. Therefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do on this day and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please rise. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please be seated. And good evening, and I do thank you for joining us this Ash Wednesday evening for this very holy Ash Wednesday service. Um, a couple of brief announcements. I would like to thank all of you who journeyed out last night to uh, join us at IHOP and have pancakes with us for our Shrove Tuesday Pancake Supper. Once again, not something we would have wanted to do by our tradition, but something we did to try to keep at least part of that tradition alive, and that is the Faith and Fellowship of St. Mary. So I thank you for being there, those that decided to come and join us. Um, we are embarking on Lent, and I do invite you, as our meeting said, to a Holy Lent. And as part of that, we will be having a Lenten program this year. I will send you full information from that, as well as the Zoom link, because it will be by Zoom for you, since we can't get large groups of people together. And our Lenten program will be on, what do we believe as Episcopalians? Um, a lot of people maybe think that all of the denominations in the Christian church believe the same thing about everything, but you would be wrong. So our Lenten program will be to kind of investigate what we as Episcopalians believe about things like the Incarnation and the Resurrection and all of that kind of stuff so that you can know as you sit here in the pews and hear me babble on during the sermon what it is I'm talking about because I generally follow our outline of faith in the Episcopal Church in my preachings. So um, I do invite you to do that. I'll be sending an email out to everybody. And to that end, if you have not been getting pastoral letters or invites or things from me, that means I don't have your email address in my email chain. So if you would send me an email with your email so that I can add you to that list, it will make it very easy for me just to add your name on the list of folks that I shoot things out to. And um, I can make sure that this information gets to you as well. So we invite you to do that. And of course, we invite you to our church on Sunday, both at 745 and at 10 o'clock. And hope you will start this Lent by being, as we heard tonight, rich in your piety. And part of that is praying to God and worshiping God. And there's no better place to do it than right here at St. Mary's. So um, I thank you for that and invite you all to a very holy Lent. And this is the time of the service that I say if this is your first time at St. Mary's, if you are here every now and again, or if you are here week by week, my brothers and sisters, welcome. You are home. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
nothing's going to be a Lord. This evening we'll be celebrating Eucharistic Prayer A on page 361 as is found in your bulletin, Eucharistic Prayer A. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross, and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary and with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.
And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. <laughs> this is the table, not of the church but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him and for those who want to love him more. So come, you who have faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been here long, you who have tried to follow and you who have failed, come, because it is the Lord who invites you. It is his will that those who want him should meet him here.
let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and gracious God, we commend ourselves to you this Lent and ask for your help, giving us the guidance and care to move forward as we examine ourselves and reconcile ourselves to you, understanding our own faults. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all this night and forevermore. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, let us bless the Lord. 